Welcome everyone. I think we will uh, get started. Uh, it's two o'clock and uh, welcome everybody to the session on the COVID-19 response here in Norway. My name is Anna Torsheng. I work at the University of Oslo. Um, we starting off with some uh, nice pictures from Norway. Um, we're a small population up here in Northern Europe with uh, around 5 million people. And we're distributed both in uh, cities and in quite rural areas, as you can see on the pictures, uh, among fjords and oceans and mountains up here. And uh, our country is split in 356 municipalities, local governments, and they're all individually responsible for testing and contact tracing in their area. And so while DHIS2 is uh, mainly used in Africa and Asia and also Latin America, Norway is now using DHIS2 for COVID, and we're very excited about that. As many other countries, Norway saw their first cases on the coronavirus this spring. And as all other countries, uh, Norway is constantly working hard to ensure that the infection spread is kept to a minimum through testing and contact tracing. Um, in Norway, we currently have uh, two main solutions for contact tracing and a couple, couple uh, smaller ones. Two of these uh, main solutions are based off of DHIS2, and today we will hear about um, one of them. And I'm very excited to have uh, three very interesting speakers today. So first off, we have Umar Nasir from the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Uh, Umar is a medical microbiologist uh, and a senior scientist, and he is heavily involved in Norway's response on testing and contact tracing. And he will give us the perspective of the Norwegian Institute of Public Health and how they work with policy, routines, and support to the municipalities. After uh, Umar, we will have Heidi Schlagsvold. She is coming from the Norwegian Association of Local and Regional Authorities. She is the project manager for one of these digital solutions for contact tracing based off of DHIS2 that is offered to the Norwegian municipalities. She will describe their role and how they have been working to provide these tool, this tool to the Norwegian municipalities who, who work with testing and contact tracing. And finally, we have Dr. Mira Grepp. She is the district medical officer from one of the larger municipalities here close to the capital. And she will give us an insight into the life of those managing this pandemic uh, day to day. And I'm very much looking forward to this session. Uh, if there is any time at the end, we will have room for questions that is post, uh, posted in the COP or in the chat. Um, and you can also go to the, uh, to the COVID-19 uh, site on the DHIS2 website to learn more about what we do in COVID-19. And finally, I just want to say that this session is being recorded. So then I will hand it over to Umar from the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see if I can, oh, of course, it's not there now. Um, let me just uh, share my screen somehow. Okay. Of course, there has to be some technical difficulty, otherwise it would not be a perfect session. Um, I thought I had it there. Let's try this one, share. And so, yes, okay, thank you so much. I'm sorry for the little technical glitch in the beginning here. So first of all, thank you very much for this invitation and this opportunity to present on the topic of the need of digital contact tracing tool in the context of the Norwegian response to COVID-19. Uh, and as Anna said, I'm, I am uh, a senior scientist at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Uh, and I thought for this presentation, uh, this talk, that I'll briefly just go into four main kind of topics. Uh, very briefly, just to see where we are on the COVID-19 status in Norway right now, uh, and how contact tracing uh, fits into the Norwegian TISC strategy. What uh, TISC stands for, we will go uh, a bit more into uh, in the later slides. Uh, and then uh, the the um, establishment of a, a new unit or a team uh, 
uh, which is which I've translated here into the Norwegian COVID response team. This is not the official translation of that team, but but for the for this for the purpose of this presentation, this is what uh, I've um, uh, I've named it or or, or uh, titled it. Uh, and then at the very end, uh, I'll also go into how the Norwegian from the perspective of the Norwegian response team and how we've been in in in, in contact with different municipalities. Uh, we see the need of a digital contact, contact tracing tool to be in place in the municipalities to be able to respond, respond in a, an appropriate way and in, a, in, a, in a, an efficient way in the municipalities to this pandemic. Um, so uh, these are data from uh, our 21st of September. In Norway, we have about 13,000 confirmed cases so far in the epidemic. Uh, we performed more than 100 uh, or close to a million tests uh, and we've recorded 256 deaths so uh, if you look at the curve on the on the right here we see we had of course in the beginning uh, in, in springtime in March we have this huge uh, huge top of of, uh, of incident of cases uh, which was which were um, uh, brought under control after um, uh, uh, after lockdown of, of a lot of the main functions of, of the society and we went into a summer went into summer months where we had uh, little or no cases and uh, predicted as it was uh, as the summer came to an end and, and the autumn is, is uh, coming up we are seeing the second wave uh, although we are seeing a sec second wave I think it's worth mentioning that the uh, the relativity of the waves are not necessarily proportionate uh, due to many factors. Number one, uh, share this the strategy of TISC, which we will get into, that there are much more people who are being tested right now. So the testing strategy is, is, is quite, way different than it was back in, in, in March and April. Uh, so we do see a lot more cases now just because they are being uh, caught. Uh, so uh, And also, uh, in terms of the severity of illness, we're also seeing something which is, I think, also mirrored in many of the European countries that uh, now the population uh, is much more uh, younger. There are less of the uh, serious uh, cases which are uh, coming up and it can also be just a result of that. We're testing more people and we're actually catching uh, more of the more of the uh, tip than we did uh, in the first uh, in the first uh, uh, phase of the outbreak. Uh, so, um, and it kind of goes back to, to the contact tracing as a TISC strategy and the, this Norwegian TISC strategy, which stands for testing, isolation, uh, smith testing, which is contact tracing and quarantine, uh, the K in Norwegian for quarantena. Uh, this is a comprehensive strategy which was launched uh, right after the first shutdown uh, to kind of, uh, we had the main idea was to be able to uh, preempt and, and prevent uh, 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 nationwide lockdowns uh, in the future, uh, and based, of course, on on the on the basic idea and the evidence, which is which is in, in literature that the contact tracing tracing is one of the best uh, measures we have in terms of being able to con control or at least slow down the spread of the of, of any infectious disease. Uh, and as Anne also explained, I mean, the response in Norway and, and the way it is. Um, the way the response is kind of uh, in terms of responsibility is put, it is a bottom down approach where the municipalities, the 356 municip municipalities in Norway have with their municipality doctors and their uh, contact tracing teams are responsible for dealing with um, local outbreaks in their municipalities and to contain them to the best of their abilities. Of course, this is all done in, 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 uh, in um, in close uh, collaboration and with advice from the national authorities, which are the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Uh, as such, there was, of course, a need to have a contact tracing tool, at least for the many of the bigger municipalities, which had a lot more cases, bigger populations, to be able to construct and, and, and coordinate their, uh, their efforts and also to be able to get a quick and, and, and a good overview of the situation in their municipalities. Uh, and of course, it also requires that the municipalities have health care service people who were uh, trained to be able to, uh, to be able to handle the, the challenges which came with, with this epidemic. Uh, 
So uh, early, uh, as I said, this was already stipulated early in one of the risk assessments that FHI did uh, in, in April, where uh, we were, um, where we made it very clear that the measures for testing, isolation, contact tracing, and follow-up should be strengthened uh, throughout the country, uh, and that would in actually entail that we would be able to lift these these broader um, the broader infectious in, infection control measures and uh, avoid uh, implementing such measures in, in the future. Uh, in, in, and also, in addition to that, we, we see that the contact tracing tools, when they are um, applied or contact tracing when it's applied in the municipalities, uh, the reporting uh, of the data which is collected through this one system to, to the national system, which allow would allow the Norwegian uh, epidemic response to be much better we will get a much better idea of where the spread in the community uh, happens and also which groups of populations are more affected and thus we, it will ha help inform uh, the policies which were to come in the future for how to handle and how to manage this this uh, this epidemic uh, <clears throat> so uh, within that um, risk assessment it it followed some initiatives uh, the initiatives uh, were basically main, mainly on three different levels. You had the strengthening and, and guidance or training of contact uh, tracers in the municipalities, so basically a training regime for the, the contact tracing teams in the municipalities. Uh, and the second was to make sure that there was there were available contact tracing tools, digital tools that could simplify the work uh, for registration, documenting, and, and reporting uh, of contact tracing data for the municipalities. Uh, and lastly, we also had a, a branch where we looked into new technology, where we investigate the usefulness of using mobile phone applications to identify close contacts. For, but for this purpose of this presentation, we'll just focus on the second bullet point here. Uh, and uh, I see I'm also running short of time, so I'm going, going to go a bit quick through this. So uh, as I said, there was a, a establishment of a Norwegian uh, COVID response unit or national smittesporings team was put in place uh, just recently in, in, in at the end of the summer and this team had uh, has basically three major uh, tasks number one was to support the municipalities and health trust in the work of managing local outbreaks and uh, and also secondly to coordinate response and infection control of outbreaks which involved more than one municipality as the municipalities were pretty uh, had, had responsible have responsibility within their municipalities and also to perform contact tracing directly in relation to positive cases on public transports and this became very much so a, 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 a an, an issue when we had uh, this the the outbreak and the outbreaks concerned uh, linked to different ships and boats and, and cruises and also with airline and air, air uh, travel. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I just wanted to just highlight that these are just since the first of uh, since July and, uh, and August uh, the uh, Norwegian COVID response unit has been you know involved in many small outbreaks uh, from advice to data collection and analysis and advice and guidelines and these are just uh, um, uh, just some of them where we've been actively uh, uh, involved with, with the municipalities in, in containing these minor, uh, minor outbreaks in these municipalities. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, for uh, for the purpose uh, of why we need digital tools, this is, these are actually some of our kind of experiences and learning points from from going into these outbreaks. One is, of course, why do these minor outbreaks occur, and why and where do they occur? Uh, it seems that, of course, there is there are gatherings of many people, often indoors and over time, uh, which are kind of the the epicenters of these smaller outbreaks. It can be private social gatherings in parties, schools and places of work, training uh, centers and sports centers, religious gatherings, and also, as I said, you have the ships, these cruise ships or ships with a lot of uh, passengers, which can almost be like a, a small uh, uh, cohort or a small private gathering in itself. Uh, but also, what is it that we see in terms of uh, what the municipality needs? So, what we what we've um, from our um, from our experience is that the municipalities have to have the ability to quickly scale up the response 
and that is uh, the kind of the kind of the bench mark or bench line for wh where they say okay we are here now and how can we actually quickly scale up our response to an outbreak uh, and to be able to do that they need to have routine and procedures for detecting and managing uh, all of possible outbreaks they need necessary personnel test capacity uh, agreements with neighboring municipalities how to deal with positive tests and so on and also a proper management of a TISC response which would prevent uh, the use of broader infection control measures and in all these the the focus here uh, we saw is that the need for of good data systemized data uh, is uh, pivotal in uh, being able to even uh, in all these phases to be able to detect to be able to um, prevent and to be able to also uh, follow up all the contexts in, in a timely manner to be able to reduce the, the, the impact of an outbreak. Uh, a tool which helps the municipality to do that is, is essential. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, to summarize, uh, we, we see that um, there are at least a couple of tools and this DHIS2 is uh, of course one of the first tools which were launched into the Norwegian COVID response. Uh, we see that it has many benefits, both on a local level and on a national level. Uh, first of all, in the local, on a municipality level, it can create and connect electronic uh, databases of cases and close contacts, which may exist uh, separately in the municipalities uh, without this digital tool. Uh, and, uh, and it will allow uh, the municipality to be able to follow up uh, work closely with the contacts. Uh, they can produce simple statistical overviews for the municipalities, many of them statistical overviews are important for reporting uh, procedures, uh, both to the national institutes and to the directorate, and not to mention the media and, and, and how they uh, communicate in, 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 um, in, with the results in, in, um, from, uh, if, to the public. Uh, and uh, compiling reports for sharing internally and externally is, is an important feature as well to have in a digital tool. And through uh, a, a, a long time use of digital tool, they can get a better overview of a spread of infection in the municipality. They can even uh, see where, uh, if there are any hotspots, if there are any target groups, if there are any geographical link, linkages within, uh, within those um, areas where infection occurs and to be able to thereby also identify clusters and, and resolve outbreaks quickly. And that also feeds into the national overview as well. So um, I will not use more time. I, I see I'm over the time already. So uh, I uh, lastly, I, we think uh, the need for digital tool in, in the contact tracing in the municipalities is an important uh, feature for a, a, an appropriate and good COVID-19 uh, response. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Omar, for your very interesting presentation. Uh, I will now give the word over to Heidi, if you are ready. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, hope I'm up and running. Yes, yes, the presentation. Thank you for invitation to tell about COAS involvement in, uh, in contact tracing. Uh, I will start first to tell about COAS, who we are and our role, before I say more about our involvement in contact tracing. All Norwegian municipalities and county councils are members of COAS. From 2020, 11 counties and 356 municipalities. There is a huge workforce in the local government sector. Almost half a million employees and more than 11,000 committed local politician, politicians whose common goal is to provide what residents need. COAS is here for their sake. By joining forces, a great deal can be achieved. Norwegian municipalities exist in a challenging intersection between local autonomy and national legislation and regulation with a financial framework determined by the Storting. COAS and the government agree, therefore, that the good dialogue between the state and the local government sector is highly important. And in the picture here, you can see a scene from the Constitution Jubileum in 2014, 
where all the country's majors were invited to Oslo for a ceremony at the castle. As I mentioned, there is an enormous workforce in our sector. Altogether, we have in fact four times as many employees at both. We all agree firmly um, that we should do more together. And course plays a central role in coordinating the sector within regard to digitalization. Course works to enable the municipal sector to take part in decision making and for the state and the local councils to be equal partners. COAS creates schemes to enable the municipal sector jointly to develop secure and efficient solutions. COAS, as an example, develops, administers joint municipal architecture and share component such as Svarut and now contact tracing. Through COMMIT, Municipalities and counties assist in managing our digitalization. The Comet Council is an advisory organ with COES, within COES for digitalization and smart use of technology. The Council aims to facilitate joint solutions and promote the interest of the municipal sector. In the picture here you can see a common digitalization strategy signed by the government and COES where we work together to digitalize public sector. And now I will tell you a little about, more about uh, contact tracing tool and what we call fixed midpoint COAS system. In the end of March and the beginning of April, we were contacted by municipalities. They wanted to COAS to see if it was possible to make a common digital tool for contract tracing. In this situation that Norway was in, there was not the best solution to let everybody, every municipalities do this by their own. We contacted some more municipalities and discussed the case in our governance model for digitalization committee. They supported that COAS took a role in finding a common solution for the municipalities. And we also worked together with Norwegian Institute of Public Health in this process. After some research, we ended up with, we ended up with DGIS2 that was in already in use in some of the municipalities. We used the COVID-19 package, we customized it to Norwegian conditions, and we started a national pilot in May with three municipalities where Oscar is one of them and we'll talk later. COAS is hosting the solution and we have, we have a very good collaboration with the university in Oslo. We have made some documents that the municipalities can use. Training materials, but also important documents for information security and general data protection regulation. That is very important. We went in production in the beginning of June. We couldn't have done this without the collaboration with the municipalities that took a central role in getting this to place and of course university in oslo today students a little situation report there is two main systems we have one that have 100 users by today we like to do further development to increase ease of use and also new wanted functionality that municipality wants. We are developing the system together with the municipalities and we meet up with eight municipalities two times a month. COES wants that all municipalities regarding the system they use benefit of new common component that COES develop together and together with national government in contact tracing or other areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Heidi, for your very interesting presentation from, uh, from COAS. I will now give the word to uh, Dr. Mira Greff in Asker municipality, one of the municipalities that was 
early start or early starters of this uh, of this system. Hi, and thank you, Anna. Uh, I'm Mira Grepp, uh, the Chief District Medical Officer in Asker Municipality in Norway. And um, I would like to tell you the story about how we went from an urgent need to a technical solution in six weeks. At the moment, I am working almost only with the COVID-19 response, which has been the main subject in my life for the last six months. Yes, here we go. The status at the beginning of COVID-19. This was the headline in a large Norwegian um, newspaper, uh, Aftenposten, in the end of May. Norway, which is one of the most digitized countries in the world, was still using pen and paper. And why didn't Norway have a digital tool before? Mainly because we don't have a high number of infectious dise diseases usually. Pen and paper is okay when maybe one or two persons are working together and there are only a few infected persons. But one loses control as soon as more people work together and there are many infected persons and outbreaks. The pandemic has changed the numbers. We also needed a shared overview of our status and we had a need to communicate with others doing the same work on, this, on one outbreak or cluster, for example, neighboring municipalities. So our main goal is infection detection and control. We want to detect infectious individuals as soon as possible and stop the chain of infection. We need to systematically interview the infected person to identify close contacts as soon as possible and to keep infected persons or their contacts in the imposed quarantine length. We also need to monitor infected persons and their close contacts to find the second and third infection chain links and stop the spread through quarantine. Lastly, the infected persons need monitoring from clinic, um, clinicians in case of a severe development of their infection. One of the main uh, subjects which is important here is trust. It's important that the individuals trust us since we need all information on close contacts whether the contact is the wife, the lover, or an illegal contact. So how to solve these challenges? We needed a digitally based program for quality assured information capture. And even if routines and process and legal frameworks for contact tracing in general is in place, and we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of the organizational work was focused on scaling things up, medical equipment, medical staff, and so on. But one thing that was missing for solving this challenge was the digital tool to enable eff um, efficiency and capacity. To get this done, we need a flexible interview guide, which can be uh, adjusted according to the individual you are talking to. We needed a guide with decision-making support because there are different individuals doing the interviews. We needed a guide that would allow capture of information for many individuals simultaneously. And of course, we needed to compile information into reports that, gave, that could give us an overview of outbreaks. So, what happened in the middle of the first wave of COVID-19? How did we manage to get a solution in place so quickly in Asker, now looking in the rear mirror? Well, we had some luck, there was some planning and some preconditions. A cross competence support team was, uh, in the beginning of March, assembled to support crisis management in our municipality. The crisis management and of course uh, also the chief medical uh, officer had an urgent need to get hold of numbers about how many infected we have, how many are in quarantine, how many are tested and how many of the tests are positive. 
uh, this was directed to the IT and rerouted to the cross-competence support team. We identified that the root cause was the process of capture and organization of data. After pen and paper, we were using spreadsheets. And spreadsheets are simply not good enough to be able to give good uh, quality uh, information about um, infected quarantines and tested. We also have a strategy in OSCAR of using national common components for technical solutions, so we quickly contacted the national authorities. We were also quite clear that we wanted to have a forward-leaning and pragmatic approach from uh, the medical officers and the contact tracing team, that we were willing to start with minimum requirements parallel with actually the first wave of uh, infected um, persons in March. This is just to show you uh, the, the um, timeline uh, of how we were working. Uh, actually, already uh, just about two weeks after the shutdown, we realized that we needed to have a better uh, digital tool than what we did have if we were able to if we were going to be able to manage the pandemic so uh, already at that time uh, we contacted uh, the national authorities and just in two weeks actually 10 days in the 30th of march we were ready to try out the uh, dhis2 uh, we did this parallelly with using the spreadsheets uh, together with a couple of other municipalities. And this uh, testing of the system uh, gave uh, continuous feedback to uh, DHSI2 developers uh, about what was necessary to change so that it actually could work uh, in practice in the municipalities. So in uh, 4th of May, um, the national platform was, um, uh, was ready for um, testing. Uh, and, and we decided to train our contact uh, trackers by registering all the pre previous cases, which was a good way of working, is our experience. And then uh, it was uh, put in production uh, in the 3rd of June. So it was quite important that we started this work while the pandemic was still rising because when we were ready to test it, we needed to do it when the infection was lower so that we had the capacity and time to be able to test it. So the timing was also important. Managing digital solutions uh, for contract tracing is, of course, in a municip municipal context. There are quite a lot of different participants with roles in different administrative levels and different individuals. There are many reporting lines, and we realized there were quite a few who had experience in how the legal frameworks intertwined for sharing of data, for instance. When is there enough data for contact tracing? but maybe too much when it comes to an individual's privacy. Here, strong democracy and open, openness as values is important. We realized that we had to work with separate government agencies. As I said, there were many administrative levels. We had to scale our staffing according to the infection load. We needed a, a tool which would help us with that. We needed to balance the privacy as i was also saying I, I just said that well we need to know whether whether the wife and the lover and whoever it is is on but we do need to balance it to, towards the privacy of people also who is able to read what we are um, registering and uh, in that instance the gdpr privacy um, laws uh, has been a challenge uh, in, in uh, being able to put uh, this DHSI2 uh, into more than a um, minimum version. So 
So which kind of learning points has our municipality been able to have? Well, we have certainly seen an increased uh, quality on contact tracing. Also in case detection, we have better situation reporting to our crisis leadership. We have an active surveillance and response for COVID-19. Uh, we have a more secure technical platform with contact with national government governance and framework. Um, our team uh, shows us that there is a better efficiency and workflow, much better support during case registration, which means that one can use people of different education levels and different uh, professions to, to do the uh, contact tracing and still keep the quality and statistics and the equal treatment for all cases. We track and visualize outbreaks. And of course, shared work, lifts, work lists mean that we can have a lower vulnerability and more independence for individual contact traces. Uh, the fact that more people needed access to the same picture of the situation was invaluable and especially also since uh, the measures that are taken and restrictions which were given were adjusted on a daily basis according to uh, where the pandemic was, how many people were infected. As I was saying, this is uh, a minimums uh, system, a minimum requirement. Uh, that we were willing to start up with very quickly, but it's very important to get the full effect of, uh, of um, a digital uh, tool that further requirements and demands um, are met. Um, the TISC strategy, which uh, was, was uh, talked about earlier on, means that there's a lot of people who have to be uh, contact tracing continuously and also across borders. especially between municipalities. People living in Aska, they are quite often in other places as well. And we need to be able to, in a, in a safe and secure way, communicate with other municipalities. We think that a mandatory use of electric, electronic contact tracing systems should um, be there. Um, we would like a more streamlined and automatic reporting to government health agencies. We are still using too much time and reporting, time which we could use on uh, contract, uh, no, sorry, contact tracing. And we need to prepare for being able to get automatic lab results, um, more efficient uh, registration through self-registration of symptoms, being able to follow up clusters, especially when the clusters are across borders. And of course, as we all know, there are new challenges coming up with um, mass vaccination and um, uh, new types of lab results, for example, in spit sample logistics. But Oscar is ready to implement necessary change again, and we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mira, for your uh, for your presentation. Uh, I've certainly learned a lot working with you on the on the small details and the complexities of doing uh, of doing contact tracing. So I hope everybody here on the session also learned something new today. Um, I don't think there will be time to answer any questions in this session, but please, I uh, I urge you all to look at the. The link in the chat here, there is a link to our community of practice where we have a separate uh, thread for this session and um, everybody is, is welcome to engage there and ask the questions that you do have and we will uh, answer and, and divert them to the right people and make sure you get, you get your answers. Thank you very much and uh, I wish you all a nice uh, conference and uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>